bless every person. I pray that you would touch their lives, Lord. I thank you for the fire of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your wonderful presence. Right now, Lord, I thank you for the peace of God and the joy of the Lord that is their strength. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And if you could go to Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. And these are some of the last words of the Lord Jesus Christ that he uttered on this earth. And the Bible says this, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. So Jesus is saying, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. This is a commandment from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So as believers, not just as people that are in the ministry, all believers are called to share the gospel, to share the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So it's really easy to share the gospel for me. I didn't really uh, start out uh, wanting to share the gospel, you know. But uh, I started to learn that there's such a need that people have that we have to go out and preach the gospel. And if you go to Acts chapter 5, uh, verse 42, okay? The Bible says, And daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. So we need to go into all the world. We need to go into the houses. Did you know that, church, that there are 7,000 languages that do not have the name of Jesus? They don't have the name of Jesus. This is what the church needs to be doing. Hallelujah. We need to go into all the world and share the gospel, share the good news of the gospel. Back in the day, that was someone's entire ministry. They go to a place like Burma, and they would take their whole life to translate the Bible into this language for these people. Hallelujah. So we need to do the same thing, okay? We need to share the gospel. Uh, some of y'all, this could be, you know, your backyard, you're across the street, you know, but to me, this is the ends of the earth, you know? When we go to Masakane and Bella Bella, that's the ends of the ends of the earth, okay? <laughs> <laughs> a rural area, so it's, it's a great place, I love it. <laughs> you know, the Bible says uh, in John 14, 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So what Jesus is saying, not because we are special, but just because he says, I am going unto my Father. He says, the very same works that I have done, you shall also do, and greater works than these shall you also do. So a lot of people, they say, well, you know, I'm not really called to be an evangelist. You know, I don't like talking in front of people. I don't want to do all this. But the thing is that every believer has a call to the miracle ministry. Every single believer, when Jesus prayed for people that were blind for 40 years, these people were able to see. Okay, so these same things, these are the things that we need to be doing. Okay, within the body of Christ, especially like in America, they say, oh, well, this person is special. This person has a healing ministry. If five people only have a healing ministry within the body of Christ, then the rest of the body is excluded. But all the believers, we all have a healing ministry. We all are able to be used by God. So if you believe, if you believe God that if you pray for the sick, they shall recover, then you have a call for evangelism. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God is not going to raise someone from the dead and then that person is not going to hear the gospel. 
That's why Paul told Timothy to do the work of an evangelist. Yes. Fulfill your ministry. You know, Timothy's calling is not really to be an evangelist, but Paul told Timothy to do the work of an evangelist. So all of us believers, while we're out there, we're going to share the gospel. We can share the gospel, the good news, the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with every single person. We can go to our workplace. We can go tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the calling that all believers have. This is what Jesus told us right before he was taken up into heaven. You know that there is 121 different groups in Pakistan that these groups that they're just now translating for these tribal people, uh, for these gypsy people, they're just now translating the Bible for one of these groups. It's 49 million people in Pakistan, 40 million people in Afghanistan. Okay, so I'm actually, uh, within this last month, I've preached five different times in Pakistan, you know, just online. So what we're doing is we're actually trying to plant churches within these places that are completely unreached, places that have never heard the gospel, that there is no churches, there's no Christian TV, anything like that, okay? So we have to do this. We have to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And I knew in high school, I said, man, I was in, uh, you know, speaking before my speech class. And I said, man, this is not what I want to do. You know, I was 16 years old. But you know what? God has put his calling upon my life. When I turned 18, I accepted Jesus Christ. I said, this is the most important message in all of history. And I have to find a way to communicate this message. Okay, so this is the supreme call of the church. We have to be able to share the gospel, share the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We were in Masakani, there was eight ladies, they're all sitting. And I shared the gospel with these ladies. You know what, the miracles are proof that Jesus is resurrected. Miracles are proof that Jesus was raised from the dead, that he is real. Hallelujah. When you have people that receive miracles, you're going to have people that refuse the gospel, but then they say, now I need to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I need to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. I preached to eight ladies, and four of the eight ladies, they're all sitting down, accepted the Lord Jesus Christ while I was at Masakani. And then there was two of the ladies, one of them had pain in her foot, one of them had pain in their leg. So I prayed for them, and then both of them got healed of pain. Hallelujah. Amen. I turned to these other four ladies and said, now will you accept the Lord? Now will you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ? And you know what? They said, no. Jesus had just healed these people, and they said, no. Acts 10, 38, it said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, hallelujah, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with them. You know what the Bible says, that sickness is an oppression of the devil. So I just felt to my heart with this lady that she had pain in her foot and she was released from that pain. I just felt to my heart that God was going to heal her, that one leg was shorter than the other. So I said, I want you to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I took her feet in my hands, and one leg was shorter than the other. So I prayed for nothing happened, but then I put her feet down, prayed for her again, put her feet down, took her feet in my hands, and her feet were the normal size. The, the leg had length. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This has happened five different times in the last six months. It's happened in this church exactly the same. Okay. Praying for someone, nothing happened, put the feet down, took the feet in my hands, and then they were the same way. So I turned to these other ladies and said, now will you accept the Lord? They all said no. They said no. The third chance, they said no. Then this other lady raised her hand. She said, don't leave me out. Don't leave me out. You know, and her leg was much shorter than the other. So I just prayed for her, nothing happened. Put down her feet, took her feet in my hands, and her feet were the normal size. Her legs were the normal size. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. 
So for the fourth time, I turned to these ladies and I said, now will you accept the Lord? And two of them accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So we saw so many people saved, 862 people saved in Masakane. It's a small area of 3,700 people. Hallelujah. 23% of the city gave their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I was doing evangelism five to six hours a day, four days a week. You know, and the reason it's significant is because other people hold crusades in really small areas, just like this. They go in there for a week, a friend of mine, and he saw 60 people accept Christ, okay? So what we're doing is we're going into these places and we're getting so many people saved and we're giving them a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ and helping the church. Amen. 262 people came just at their altar calls, just in four days, you know? So God has really put this on my heart. Something happened to me there in Masakani, I can't tell you, but it's like God just flipped a switch in my life. You know, something happened to me. So I wanna encourage you to share the gospel. I'm gonna be going out here, okay, two to three days a week here. Uh, in Primrose, okay, and you can always contact uh, Pastor Nicholas, you can also contact me, because I would love to go out there with you if you have time to share the gospel and to show you how to lead people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah, I'm doing eight different events, crusades, in the next 30 days in seven different cities, you know? Many different places in Pakistan. We're going back to Masakane. And uh, what we want to do is plant churches. And there's two rural areas outside Bella Bella. We have the land and everything, you know? There's two rural areas there that we want to plant a church. We want to hold a crusade. We want to plant a church. You know, if you ask me what is the number one purpose for the church, the church is there to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If we can share the gospel and propagate this through a church where there is no church, then this is what God is wanting us to do. Yes. You know, how many people know that 1.3 billion people in India, there is 1,200 different languages just in India. Hallelujah. So these people need to be reached with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. My yes. friend called me for four months and said, come to India. Come to India. I said, no. I have to go to Africa. But the Lord was putting on my heart India. Hallelujah. Amen. So we went into India. People that were deaf were able to hear. Hallelujah. Amen. Many wonderful things. I went to eight rural villages just in one day. Planted a church in this rural village. They might speak three different languages in one of these villages. Hallelujah. But my friend, they gave him the ability, God gave him the ability to speak dozens of these languages to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When you're in India, you know, if you say you're a Christian, then sometimes you lose your job. Sometimes you, you don't have a place to stay. You look down upon. There's so many different things, you know, but we saw 8,764 decisions in 65 days in India, South Africa, Uganda, and Kenya. Hallelujah. And God wants to use every single person Every single person here, God wants to use you in the same way. Hallelujah. Amen. And greater works than these shall you also do. Hallelujah. Amen. God is a good God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'd just like to do this right now. If you need to uh, accept the Lord, just say this with me, okay? Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for dying for me. And raise it again for me. Coming back again for me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I forgive everybody. And I want to tell you, you're forgiven, okay? And if you have sickness, you know, not that I'm anything, but Jesus is, is something, okay? We have four more confirmed miracles in Masa Common. We have 4,000 decisions for Christ. In Bella Bella. We saw 3,000 people come to Christ in four different schools in Bella Bella by 9.30 a.m., okay? 
So God wants to use every single person. Hallelujah. If you're sick in your body, raise your hand. I'll pray for you. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you, okay? Lord, I thank you right now by the power of the blood of Jesus. I thank you by the authority of the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you for healing people. Okay? And just wave your hand, okay, if, if God has touched you. Okay? And you can always, you can always uh, ask me to pray for you after the service, okay? But, uh, you know, Jesus talks about discipleship. To us, discipleship means writing people on a piece of paper, you know, going to their house. But Jesus sent out the 70. Hallelujah. So I am offering something to this church that I'm not offering to anyone else right now because I want to help churches. Okay? So I actually want to disciple people here in this church that you can go one-on-one -on -one with me. You know, one day here in Primrose, I won 490 people to Christ. You know? I went into a school. I won a bunch of people to Christ after school, I invited them all to this church. Okay, so God is speaking to you. We can set up a time that we can even go out for one hour, go out once a month, go out once a week, whatever it is. Uh, so yeah, thank God for Pastor Olga, Pastor Nicholas, and uh, God bless y'all. Okay, thank, thank you so much. Yeah.